What we got is a small community with a population of about uh, 7,000 uh, in the West Mamprosi district in northern Ghana, in the northern region of Ghana. Uh, it's predominantly a farming community. that belongs to a greater kingdom known as the Mamprugu State. In 2008, the three social work students, Sarah Ibishua, Yuri Abeba Bawa, and Tamara Potfai, came to Guabriga to do their internship at the Guabriga orphanage. They realized there was a lot of need for support, so they sent emails to their family and their friends to make them aware of the Guabriga orphanage. Another person which received this email was Christine Fastinger, and together the four ladies founded the NGO Brave Aurora, which was registered in March 2009 in Austria and Switzerland, and since 2010 it is a registered NGO in Ghana. Over the years the NGO grew, and as you can see around the board, you see all the staff of Brave Aurora. Now in May 2013, Brave Aurora is the biggest employer in Global Liga, my name is Ivan Schweiger, I'm the project manager of Brave Aurora and I want to welcome you to Brave Aurora and I want to welcome you to Global Liga. As we have heard before, the NGO Brave Aurora started with the support of the Guabriga orphanage. In the year 2009, all the 45 orphans lived together in one house in the old orphanage. And as you can imagine, if 145 children live in one house, it was very, very crowded. So one of the measures Brave Aurora took was to build the foster care community. I am the host mother. I work with Brother Rola in the foster care community. I am taking care of 44 children. Brave Aurora reactivated the borehole and connected six solar panels, as you can see here. Through the solar panel, the water is pumped to the high level water tank, which you see behind me, or directly to the old orphanage. Through reactivating the borehole and providing the solar system, Brave Aurora could assure the provision of clean drinking water for all children which lived in Brave Aurora's foster care community or the old orphanage. But the water is not only here for Brave Aurora, the water is also here for the community. Especially in the dry season, many community members also come to fetch water from this water source. The results of the water analysis in Tamale have shown that both wells are heavily polluted. So uh, Brave Aurora really decided to take action. But we are different than some other projects because we don't just build a well somewhere in a village without involving the community. So uh, we first, before we, we are building a well, um, we really try to talk to the community, to make workshops for awareness raising, um, how important clean water um, and pure water is for their life and hygienic situation. And so um, 
Yeah, we also talked to the chief before that a water board has to be created where women are inside because women are the ones who really use the water in daily life and they also have to create um, a money collecting system um, that the maintenance of the wells are assured. So all these things are before we implement the project. Great Verona also built the volunteers compound it is the place where up to present the project manager and the volunteers on site live. Since its beginning, Brave Aurora closely worked with volunteers who played a vital role to develop the NGO till this date. is located next to the foster care community so that close monitoring of the children can always take place. We are very very thankful for the work our volunteers are doing right here in Guaboliga. They are all from all over the world and from all over Europe, America, Australia. Um, more than 20 volunteers uh, worked in Guaboliga already and it is very important for us to say that they don't have to pay a commission or something to Brave Aurora because we are just very happy that they are working voluntarily for the children and the community of Guaboliga. I wake children up in the morning, dress them for school. I went with them to, for breakfast at 7 o'clock before they go to school. I am the Twelve thirty, I go with children for lunch. Seven o'clock, I go with children for supper. After supper, seven thirty, we start with the evening program from Monday to Sunday. Monday, music and dance. Tuesday, reading. Wednesday, storytelling. Thursday, art and craft. Friday, moving. Saturday, free game, Sunday games. We started for reintegration and it's left with eight children. And soon the eight children will be reintegrated. The reintegration that is taking place here is a government policy. In fact, the other Friday when we met, I said it, that people will not, will not start saying so. It's um, um, Mr. Silver, the project manager, who is send you, remove you from the, and then return you to. No, it's a government policy throughout the world. Actually, how we start the integration? First of all, we educate parents and we educate the children too. And then after that, we cancel parents on an individual basis and the children too. After that, we do home visits. We go to the families to see how they are living. All the children, we visit them twice a week, each family. But those children that have gone home for a year and a half now, we visit them once a week. We are now in Kamunabe's family. The old man is the house owner. It's called Kamunaba. And then we are in his family. We have uh, seven children. Seven children that we are taking care of, they live in this family. And Kabunaba is their grandfather. Madam Adisa is their grandmother. And here we have uh, Ikasha, Charles, Nashiru, Tahiru, Fisu, Jedu, and Salifu. They all live in this family. I'm also here to visit Jalu who got hurt and was reported to us by his family. About one and a half year now that some of them are living in the house. And as we do visitation, 
we found out that the children are doing well at school. Um, before we actually send the children home, we look at their sleeping places, where they will sleep. Some of them have no place to sleep. For example, some of the children we provide with houses, with roofing materials, with doors, with windows, with cement. Some of the houses we give them electricity. There's electricity in the village, but some of the parents are not able to provide electricity to their company. So we support them to get electricity into the children's rooms. Mostly the electrical part, I work with them when there's fault in any of the roller buildings and the one of the orphanage children building. That's the way I do for My name is Afia Kwabna. Uh, this is my house. I live here with my children. I was married in Kasepe and my husband died and I came and I'm living here with them. This is Idris's room and this is Asana and Joe's room. This is Idris's I thank Brave Farura so much for supporting us to put up these two rooms for my children. God bless Brave Farura. Long live Brave Farura. These children. When they are reintegrated, we support them to live in the family. We support them with bathing materials, like soap, sponge, towel, buckets. All children who are back in the house, they receive reintegration food. This is four, five bowls of rice, four bowls of maize, and one bowl of beans. Uh, we've been in contact with Brave since 2009. Uh, at night, home women are in labor. We have the headache of transporting them to the, to the, 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 the regional hospital. So, Brave Uroda started assisting in that uh, direction because they had a dependable pickup that lifted uh, our pregnant mothers who were in labor to the hospital. In critical periods, as farmers who encounter reptiles like snakes, they pick up for Brave Uroda arrived such a corporate again to the nearest hospital. So they started assisting us in the health direction. Uh, other needs the community had in mind was water and sanitation. Well, we had water problems within the community. The government in this wisdom provided us with uh, a small town water system. So Brave Aurora took it up on itself to transform the entire system uh, into a solar panel so that we have abundant sunshine here. We convert it to a solar panel. The issue of electricity uh, could also be you know, reduced. So that is what they are currently they have kept, uh, currently promised to do when we started doing feasibility studies. And we hope that that uh, thing will come to fruition. Another sector where Brave Aurora is involved is the educational sector. In Guaboliga there is a primary school, which means primary 1 to primary 6, and the junior high school, which means junior high school 1 to junior high school 3. Brave Aurora didn't decide to take the easiest way. We talked permanently the last two years to the Ghana Education Service that they have to employ more teachers, and they did so, so we are very grateful for that now. The educational uh, needs of the community. What is a school that were lacking teachers? So as an NGO, we spoke with them and they decided to recruit teachers, volunteer teachers, paying them their salaries just to man the, 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 the school population that wasn't less than 800 people. Through my good attendance, the volunteer, uh, we are appointed as the volunteer teachers. We always, they always give us Sister Ghana cities a month. And the best attendance teacher, they give us soup, three bar of soup every month. And we have the IT training again by the 
NGO. There is a, a program called the Teachers Incentives Program. We monitor the performance of the teachers and based on their performance every month the best teachers get the reward. Uh, as an educational coordinator, my major responsibility is to ensure that the teacher incentives program, which has been implemented by the NGO, is very successful. We have some criteria that we normally use to measure the performance of the teachers. Monitoring the teachers' evaluation, I evaluate them three times. Yeah, or the monthly incentives is actually meant to reward distinguished or excellent teachers. Then we also have a timely incentive package, which is basically meant to encourage group performance. And we do this by evaluating the performance of the entire teaching staff. Based on their score, we organize an ICT program, training program for them. And each year, the best of all volunteer teachers is qualified for a scholarship. I have been in the voluntary service in Goa Bulga since 97 to 2010. So I was in the, at the voluntary till the NGO came from abroad, Bulgaria. And because of my good attendance, I was sponsored by the, that NGO to the Jackson Educational Complex. And they usually pay my receipt exams too. If I'm writing two papers, they pay the fee for me. Even at times, if I'm going to school, at times they give me a lot of faith to go. If there is any contribution in the school, they give me money to go and contribute. And, and I was the best attendant teacher in Guabulga, and I was run by the Bavaria NGO. I will complete in December 2013. So after, comp after completing, after writing my last semester, and my results are in maybe I will get good employer at the government at the Walwala Education Office and I will be a professional teacher in the school. Also assisted with the library for the school and a computer lab of which we are very grateful. But we have seen tremendous change, tremendous change in the, 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 the performance of our peoples with regards to the establishment of the library and then the, the computer laboratory. I work with Bukalola in Ghana, a charity organization of Spain in Guafila. I'm um, a electrician in Liberia. I work from the line to 9 a.m. We start off from Monday to 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. each week to Monday to Friday. The library is located in the school premises. Even sometimes the teachers also come to the school, to the library to do the books and prepare the other things and teach. Yes, She works for Brave Aurora. Uh, she is a cleaner. At weekdays, from Monday to Friday, she cleans the office block. And then on Sunday, she used to cook for the children. But for now that all children are reintegrated, she is a cleaner for the office block and at the volunteers' compound. <laughs> His name is Yidana Wuni. He was the watchman taking care of the children at the old orphanage. But now that all children are reintegrated, he is now watching uh, at the office. He's watching the computer room and then the library, the social work office, and the whole block of the office. In the holidays which just started uh, uh, finished last week, we provided extra classes in Guabaliga, but not just for the Broker or children, but for all children of Guabaliga, for the junior high school.
I'm a teacher of Bob Junior High, integrated science teacher. And uh, I think we've stayed back for extra classes during the summers, which is organized by the Rural. The main purpose of this particular classes or holiday classes is to make sure that uh, most of the topics have been covered. And then Rural Gorilla has taken upon them to organize these extra classes in order to be able to finish our topics. We wish and pray that these classes will always continue every occasion. Because we as teachers have realized that it has been helping most of our students. Because once you have been able to finish the syllables for the term, I think students wouldn't be having problems in writing their terminal exams and leaving their final exam. So I think this uh, initiative by Grover has been very helpful to us. And we wish for this to continue for a very long time. Yuri Ita Masu, and to learn to learn in a ruler. So, car ban and disma to my poor one. But my ban basim yalakama by Jane Nibi Rabrana at the man ban of Puma. Ten nine sim, Kabumbula Mania, do me to go back to So, then that is an alarm. Yes, his name is Peter Masu, he's a farmer to be a ruler. He teach the children how to farm and he's asked them to go and bring cow dam to spread in the farm and they farm so that the land will gain more strength. They don't use fertilizer. The puma I don't want to say what this is the farm that we are now standing but what we are doing now is we are starting to clear the land so that when it rains you can get it sucked out or it will not plow and soon is what we want to show. One of Brave Aurora's project is the garden which you see behind me. The idea behind the garden is the children when they live in the orphanage they don't learn, learn the skills how to work in the garden or how to grow plants. This was the initial reason why the garden was started. But the different reason for the garden is that we want to show new ways of gardening in Guabuliga. We want to bring new plants to Guabuliga. We want to show different ways how you can grow your crops. So that in the future when these children are having their own house and when they start to have children and they have their own family, that they are prepared to, to provide the family with good food. The rainy season has started, so there will be there will be different plants which will come to the garden now. So right now you see the malam with some children removing the old plants in preparation for yams and different things we want to plant now in the rainy season. My name is Malam. I'm working with the garden. With I'm working with the garden and Brave Lawrence and my children is working the, all the time, evening. The grazing season time, I plant all fruits, seed potatoes, peppers, and yams, and tomato. I not use the chemical with my garden. I use the, the local one with manuel and trace thin. If we pray the chemical is not good, I'll use it with local thin. Is Manuel Tins. They haven't stopped there in collaboration with the community. They've embarked on an, an environmental project which has to do with uh, a tree planting. As such, together with Brief Aurora, the community is developing a green belt. The green belt, which was realized in cooperation with the University in Vienna. 150 trees were planted in September 2012. The community was involved in the planting and the community members came out to plant the trees and also to provide proper fencing for each tree so that they are protected from the animals. Later on, it was a big task to make sure that all the trees are watered regularly since the dry season here in Guaboliga is from October up to March. And it also should be a good example against the cutting of the trees 
which is happening plenty these days, to show the people that rather instead of cutting down all the trees, there is the need to plant new trees so that future generations will also be able to build their houses and to cook their food. We have done so many of them already, meaning we have integrated them with their families. And their families are grateful that these kids have come back wonderful children, good children, well behaved, and they're willing to integrate into the society that they have, their fathers and mothers had left them to do well in society, to be called people of substance, children of substance, not to be called or tag names with the stigma of orphanage. So, Ray Ferrara coming in and taking these children and, and training them, hiring social workers, hiring education coordinators, hiring a project manager, showed how important these children are to these people from Austria. We are finally going to reintegrate these people and now we have left with about eight of them, which we're going to do next week. The people who are receiving this offers today, they are my sons, my children. We have to see them as such. I'll have a special eye on how you have received them and how you are going to keep them with the support of Great Aurora until they go to their fullest potential. So we are here today to reintegrate eight of them. That is the last batch. And Gorbunga, I'm glad to say, is a model in the CRI initiative. We are one well family. The children are coming home to us, fathers, mothers, aunties, cousins, nieces and nephews. We should welcome them home. They are not newcomers to the family. They are part of the family already. So we should receive them with joy and give them all the support they need to grow into responsible adults. The three highest principles of Pray for Aurora are sustainability, transparency and health for self-health. We really try in all our projects that we don't make nobody dependent on Pray for Aurora. Um, that means that we try to develop some projects like the microcredit program where people um, can generate their income on their own after a while for themselves and their families. Um, the community is involved in each step and before we start implementing a project we always think together about the sustainable exit plan. Uh, a project of Brave Aurora is just successful when the ownership of a project is handed over to the village and to the chief, to the community or when a project um, is finished successfully like the reintegration program. <laughs> They are, okay, they are coming out to eat, but she,
abilities within them. And we are proud of them. They have shown us by example that they are changes of the environment. They are changes of gravel. And we will support them. I think their success story is the fact that they are involving the community in all that they seek to do in this community. And that is what uh, I'm most happy for. Because once you are living with people and they're involved in all that they are doing in their day-to-day -day activities and they are totally involved, you all feel part of it. The managers who have really come here and stayed and probably left, they worked it out in such a way that they were in close contact. All of them have always been in close contact with the community. First by holding regular meetings with myself, the chief, and sometimes with my cabinet. And when there is a need for the entire community to know what is happening there, uh, task me to summon a cross section of the community that interacts with them. There is still constant monitoring of the children, even though they are integrated. We still have our two social workers whose responsibility it is to take care of the children. Now that uh, all children have been reintegrated and they are living uh, in their family houses, Brave Aurora still gives them support. As a social worker in this organization, we still have a lot to do for these kids. Brave Aurora still, them, still gives them support in uh, health insurance, like health-related issues, uh, renewing health insurance, selling them sending these children for health checkup. And we, Brave Aurora also support them in education, like educational materials, providing them with boots, pens, um, and other stationaries that they need for school. The reasons why we had so many orphans in Guaboliga um, is on the one hand that the poverty level in Guaboliga is very high, so the parents could not afford to keep the child in the family. On the other hand, it happened that either one or both parents passed away. We check on this case on their school attendance. That is, we go into their school to check on their register, whether they are in school every day. And if they are absent from school, as a social worker, we go to the family to know the reason why these kids are not in school. Whether the person is sick or laziness, and we are able to let the child know the importance of being in school. While these kids are back into their extended family, we social workers and with the organization, we still give these kids reintegration food items every 15th of every month. The manager of Brave Aurora has assured us that there will be some monthly remittance to these uh, orphans in their families. We continue to support them educationally and you know their needs that will let them grow to their fullest potential. I have been made to understand by the management that your focus will now be on education, sanitation, and the welfare of this community. You are here for the development of this community. I want to pledge that you have my fullest support on this regard, and together we shall go to work with that community. The MP of journey doesn't end going back to the families. We still have to continue to support them. And here's where I come in. I come in to tell or to ask all those donors from far and near, especially in Europe and Austria in particular, that all the monies, all the resources, all the time they have spent, we have built rooms, we have put in beds, we have bought books, we have bought learning aids, teaching aids for these children. So. Going back to their families does not mean the work stops. Actually, it's when the work begins. Because now we have to make sure that we have enough people to go, social workers to go and be with them and ask them what they're doing, see that everything is done for them, so they will continue the process that they started. Thank you for that dream that you have realized. Thank you for choosing this, this, this obscured village out of nowhere. And now it's a model because what you have done with this reintegration is going to catch on because the UNICEF and the Ghana government 
and all other governments around the world. They don't want the stigmatization of orphanage. And this is the way forward. The way forward is to keep these children and train them and reintegrate them, put them back to society, link them with people that will care for their daily needs, have social workers that are uh, hurting to go out and help. They are feeling it to go out and help these children to be better people in society. So Tamara, Julia, uh, Christine, and Sarah, I just want to say thank you.